These days, the only people who call themselves patriots are the ones who want to spread trans rights in Afghanistan, or sell you coffee with pictures of guns and hot chicks. It's this empty marketing tactic, but it's appealing to something real. People do still love America, and the only thing they get for it is to be seen as a marketing set. But patriotism isn't about beverage marketing or making sure that every man in Kandahar gets breasts and a BBL. American patriotism is natural and normal, and as hard as the left has tried, they haven't been able to stamp it out. Patriotism is about loyalty. It's something that starts at birth. G.K. Chesterton wrote about this a hundred years ago, back when England had a much higher caliber of fat guy. He talked about his love for the world as being like patriotism. A man belongs to this world before he begins to ask if it is nice to belong to it. He has a loyalty long before he has any admiration. In his essay, A Defense of Patriotism, Chesterton says loving your country is like loving your family. It's not blind. A patriot wouldn't say, my country, right or wrong, any more than a son would say, my mother, drunk or sober. Getting sloppy at Applebee's isn't good, and it doesn't make it better if your mom's doing it. But that means having a standard outside of and above your country. Chesterton sees a certain kind of patriotism as shallow and misguided, celebrating only stuff like trade and territorial squabbles rather than the central glories of a culture. It's like loving Athens because their ships had cool oars. We may be born with loyalty, but it needs to be encouraged or we'll lose it. We're not dogs who are just loyal no matter what. Though if you're watching this and you are a dog, congrats on figuring out the internet. Like and subscribe. If we're not trained to love America for what it is, our patriotism will be as mature as a kid playing with plastic army men. Part of this comes from the schools. If kids get any taste of our national literature or history at all, it's through a joyless, militant, anti-racist lens. If they teach American literature, it's all Uncle Tom's Cabin. If they teach American history, it's all slavery and the civil rights movement. It paints America as the home of the big white meanies. It's not an education so much as a white guy pinata party. There are lots of things that could inspire and encourage patriotism, but those things are left out or de emphasized. But we have to love America for something. So if it's not history and culture, it will be for fighting wars. But if you don't know anything about who's fighting and what it means to them, you won't care about the fight for long. Imagine if Rocky was all fight scenes, just two hours of punching. You wouldn't care. You'd get bored. In the same way, once you learn why someone's fighting a war, it makes a difference. Are we fighting to preserve the American way of life, or are we fighting so Ukrainian homosexuals can buy freezer babies? Might as well ask. Chesterton was an Englishman, so he loved England. He didn't love the British Empire because it was expanding. Just because something is growing doesn't mean it's good. Case in point, Chesterton loved England because it was his. He says that England's sin wasn't failing to appreciate other nations, but the supreme spiritual transgression of failing to appreciate ourselves. But of course he saw problems. He wasn't blind. The point is that when you do love a thing, its gladness is a reason for loving it, and its sadness is a reason for loving it more. All optimistic thoughts about England and all pessimistic thoughts about her are alike reasons for the English patriot. And patriotism doesn't just sit back and admire. It also makes things better. He asked us to imagine a man born in Pimlico, a part of central London, which I guess was a real dump. My guess is it's still a dump, but now it's covered in prayer rugs and stabbing victims. Here's Chesterton. It is not enough for a man to disapprove of Pimlico. In that case, he will merely cut his throat or move to Chelsea. Nor certainly is it enough for a man to approve of Pimlico, for then it would remain Pimlico, which would be awful. The only way out of it seems to be for somebody to love Pimlico, to love it with a transcendental tie and without any earthly reason. If there arose a man who loved Pimlico, then Pimlico would rise into ivory towers and golden pinnacles. Pimlico would attire herself as a woman does when she is loved. For decoration is not given to hide horrible things, but to decorate things already adorable. A mother does not give her child a blue bow because he is so ugly without it. A lover does not give a girl a necklace to hide her neck. If men loved Pimlico as mothers love children, arbitrarily because it is theirs, Pimlico in a year or two might be fairer than Florence. Some readers will say that this is a mere fantasy. I answer that it is the actual history of mankind. This, as a fact, is how cities did grow great. Go back to the darkest roots of civilization and you will find them knotted round some sacred stone or encircling some sacred well. People first paid honor to a spot and afterwards gained glory for it. Men did not love Rome because she was great. She was great because they had loved her. That's how it works. We don't have to wait around for America to get better before we love her again. If we do that, it will just get worse. America used to be nothing, but then people decided to love it. They built their homes, they raised their families, they started stuff. We can't make America great if we hate it. The left tries to flatten America because they do hate it. At this point, they're so lazy they're just importing people to hate America for them. This is why these citizen of the world stuff is so dangerous. You can't love everywhere the same way you love your place. You can't love everyone else's wife and kids the same way you love yours. 
In fact, you shouldn't. Seventh Commandment and all that. Yes, I see problems in America. Yes, I want change here. But I want America to be restored, not destroyed. As ugly as it is, it's still my country. And we all see what happens to someone who isn't loved.